Hey everybody, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited for these awesome DIYs today. These are some that I've had in the mix for quite some time and procrastinated and never got them done, but they are done for you today. I cannot wait to hear what you think. I have uh, three of them, three fabulous DIYs. Make sure to do all the YouTube things where you, if you haven't already, you subscribe, like, share, and comment. The comments really, really help boost my channel and help my channel grow. And I just wanted to say thank you so much to everybody who has supported me in the last 30 days. And since I began, uh, the last 30 days have been amazing for my channel. And I just wanted to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you so very much. So here we are at our first DIY. This is not the elusive Hocus Pocus book, but this one is just as cool. I got this mold from Timu. I want to say it was $5 and their little dragon eyes. So this is some joint compound and this is just an old book I had around that I was actually going to get rid of. So it worked out perfect for this. And if you saw my last video, I used hot glue in a mold and it came out just as fabulous in this one. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill the mold up all the way with hot glue. Make sure that you tap out the air bubbles so that way you get a nice solid fix. So I use joint compound to give the top of my book some texture. Now originally the dragon scales were going to be made out of the joint compound, but it just didn't work out. So I pivoted and came up with a different idea, which you'll see here in a minute. But uh, so if you're not if you're not going to attempt to make dragon scales at a joint compound, do not put this on the book because it was really hard in some spots to get the hot glue to stick to it. But if you wanted to make this is a another great way to make a textured book. I've used, uh, you know, Mod Podge and uh, toilet paper. Um, I've used paper bags, um, all that kind of stuff. The joint compound on the. Um, the spine of the book, though, was perfect. It gave it just the look that I was going for. So if I had to redo this, I wouldn't put it on the top, but just on the sides. So this is how cool the dragon eye came out. I absolutely think it is so awesome. It's going to focus right there. Look at how cute that is. It has all the little scales and everything. It was amazing. So you know these panels that you can get at the Dollar Tree. I have a boatload of them because I use them for so many different things. But I just made a little template out of this little piece of paper and I cut around. I traced them and then I cut like a whole bunch of them out. So I'm just gluing them on in scale form because I wanted my scales to have detail. I didn't want them just to be straight. And I wanted them to be sturdy, and this is what worked for me. I uh, definitely tell me what you think down below. I didn't want to. I again, I wanted to use everything that I had in my craft stash. I didn't want to go out and purchase anything new to make this happen. So this is what I came up with. I think it's actually pretty cool. scenes out and this took a while so I just had a show on and I just hot glued my little happy happy hands away and um, 
as you can see as I build up on it that it looks really really cool I love the effect that it has definitely um, you could definitely use some like holographic uh, cardstock even holographic um, uh, vinyl would have been really cool I just don't have any of that so this is what I had come up with but you do what you think will work the best for you but it just goes to show that you can use these little panels for just about anything um, just takes a little thought and I, literally I pondered this for a while before I came up with it but I think it looks And there she is in all her glory, all done and ready to go. So I took her outside and I spray painted her with a lime green spray paint, as well as I spray painted the eye the same color. So I am just going to go over the top of this green and I'm going to brush on a green, black, and blue. So this is the part where you get to get creative and make your dragon whatever color that you want him to be. And, you know, I just went over and then I used the darker colors in the center to give it more dimension. And I, this was fun. This was fun. I, I love the process of mixing colors to see what we get out of them. And, um, tell me down below what color that you would have chose for your dragon. Um, but see, once you have the paint on them, it doesn't look like that panel. Like if I didn't tell you that this was that Dollar Tree panel, you would have never known it um, looking at it once it's painted. So I left all this process in here so you could see the magic happen. I just thought this was a lot of fun. And again, it's super time consuming. Um, not a difficult project, but time consuming. And so, you know, I just had my little show on in the background and I just painted away. Um, so if uh, you haven't watched my videos before, I craft on my kitchen table. I just put contact paper down and go for it. And then um, my husband is in the living room. And so we just normally carry on a conversation while I'm doing this and recording for you. People come in and out. You'll see shadows. You'll see my cat, my dogs, all that good stuff. This is a, definitely a, a a whole family event that you got going on here, but that's that's how we make it happen, and um, we, uh, you know, we have a lot of fun hanging out together while I do this, and you know, just the the normal everyday stuff around the house that happens um, helps the creative process actually, because we go back and forth and talk about things, and um, the dragon scales were helped out by my husband because you know he was telling me, oh no, it's got to lay over this way. And uh, so I started to paint the eye and I forgot to hit record here, but you see the concept. I did the same thing where I added um, the same colors that are on the book onto the eye. I painted the little centerpiece right there with some black uh, paint right there. This is all acrylic paint. And then I painted the spine of the book black as well. And then I'm using hot glue to attach my eyeball to my book. Now, a funny thing is, is that in the corner of the eye, the hot glue like came through the eye, which is the first time I've ever had hot glue come through a mold that I've done, but I think it looks pretty cool. You could see it starting to seep right there. Um, but it was just an added little effect. He looks like he's crying or whatever, but I think he came out super cool. Definitely let me know down below if you would try um, to make your own dragon eye book um, after you see this.
So I definitely didn't want my book pages to look crispy and new. So I took some of my antique wax and I'm just going to go over all of the pages on the side, the top and the bottom too. So again, uh, do as I say, not as I do, add water so that the paint spreads out. I thought it would spread out a lot better than it did on the pages. So I went and got some water and I am just dousing this book down, which in the long run is going to help with that, um, you know, to give it that old look that we're going for here because we it's not a crispy new book. It's an old, it's an old book. So I just took my um, paper towel and I wiped off all the excess, but then I still wasn't liking it. I felt like it wasn't giving us the look that we were going for. So this is Cashew by Waverly, and I'm just going to um, add that in and give it the dimension and the the zhuzh that this book needed for sure. For sure. So once you see me add it on, you're going to be like, yes, yes, girl, yes. That is exactly the look that it needed to go there. And it just blended it out so much better than it was before. So another thing you could do is tea stain your pages. You can, you know, burn some. You could do, you know, a whole bunch of different things. But I love the way this book came out. I think it looks so awesome. And it's a great addition to my Halloween decor. So here we are at DIY number two. Now this one I saw on TikTok. I've seen literally one person do this DIY because I've looked all over TikTok. I've looked on YouTube. I've looked other places and I haven't seen somebody do this. And I just thought her idea was so amazing. And I literally have all the stuff to make it happen. So we are going to make a Medusa here. I will link the ladies TikTok down below in the description box if you want to see how she made hers. Now ours are similar but but different for sure. Um, I did a few uh, more than a few extra steps to make my Medusa come out as awesome as she did. So um, the back of these snakes are these snakes are from Amazon if I remember I'll link them in the in the box as well. But um, they have the little ridges on the back. And it made it really hard to get the glue and the stick to stay because you want to put bamboo skewers on the back. So I used the tip of my hot glue gun to actually melt down the plastic so that I can have somewhere for my uh, bamboo stick to rest. And then I just put some glue on the bottom, put the stick down, and put glue right back on the top of that. So you're seeing right here me melt down the plastic. It did take a minute or so, but... Um, it definitely worked and gave it a well to, for the glue to adhere to with the stick. Um, definitely, 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 you have to let these set up. So if you try to pick these up, you know, within the first five minutes, the stick is not going to stick to the to the um, to the plastic. So I let them sit for about ten minutes before I started to mess with them. So I just I had snipped all my snakes in half, and then I put used both halves to make sure that Medusa's uh, hair was full of snakes. So I just stuck a um, floral foam into the top of my head here and I've seen them all over the place. I think this one came from TJ Maxx or one of those but um, I've seen people post them you know from all over the place. TJ Maxx, Marshalls, um, you know, anywhere like that. I'm sure you can find one on Amazon if this project is something that you must make. But this is just, you know, play with your snakes, put them where you want. I would cut the bamboo sticks down so that they could have um, different varying heights. And um, yeah, this was just a super easy process. So I took her outside and I used gap filler to fill in the gaps. So that it wasn't just snakes and floral foam. I didn't. I definitely didn't want that look. So, um, so far we are 
uh, spot on with the TikTok that I saw with this Medusa. And then I'm just going to go where go ahead and go around and give her a haircut. Um, the floral, I mean, the gap filler will, will definitely bubble up and I didn't want that look. So I just went around her head and I smoothed it out. So it looked more like hair instead of just bubbles, like coming out of the top of her head here. But my snakes are definitely secure inside of this head. Um, I may be able to take this apart. I may not. It's, I just, she came out so awesome. I am not worried about it. And I had already taken <laughs> this out of my living room because I had it in my living room with the plant inside and my husband hated it. He's like, she's creepy. Um, we definitely need to get her out. So now that she's Medusa, maybe she'll be less creepy and more cool. I don't know, but he thought she looked really cool too. So this is just Moss uh, Waverly chalk paint. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to paint all of this um, gap filler and the snakes as well. So I did, so when I took it outside, I did the, um, the gap filler and I also spray painted it with a single coat of white, just regular white spray paint to kind of act as a primer. I didn't have any primer, so that's that's how I made my primer. And um, because, you know, the snakes were all different colors and I wanted it to be easier to paint over them. So definitely a cool step to add the spray paint to give you a base to work with. You can see in the background there, I am watching my favorite show. I watch it uh, almost every single time I craft. So it is a uh, good witch and I have seen it probably a billion and one times, but there is something just soothing about it to put the show on and craft at the same time. So if you notice that I went down onto the head where her hair is, you know, part of the cement bottom and I also colored that moss as well. And then I had a couple more snakes left and I felt like she needed some more. So I just glued them to the bamboo skewers, took them outside, spray painted them white. And now I'm just adding a few more. I really wanted some, I wanted at least one to come down over her face. Cause you know, every Medusa that you see, she's got, you know, like the hair comes down, her snakes come down. Um, so I am trying to figure out exactly how to make that happen, but I just put a coat of moss on them and then stuck them right into the, um, the gap filler, which worked out really well. Now, let me tell you something I learned about the gap filler. I've used it before and I, I, I maybe I just never touched it before, but do not touch it. It does not come off your skin that easy. I had to use acetone and it took a couple days to come off. Um, that was real fun. So note to self, use gloves when using the gaps and cracks filler. So now this is just the green of the season, apparently. And I'm going to go through and uh, dry brush the snakes. I want to give them some dimension. I, I don't want it just to all look the same. Although if you like all the same, I've seen plenty of Medusas where she's all one color. You could have taken this outside and just spray painted it, I think, in the original video. She takes it outside and just spray paints it, and that's it. I contemplated doing gold. You'll see a lot of Medusas, um, you know, sometimes when people DIY headpieces, the snakes are gold. But I wanted to stay more true to the Medusa that is in, you know, in movies that I've seen. So this is what I decided to do here. So you could just see it's just a process. You just play with it. I added some of the green paint, the darker green over the moss. And I'm just going to go back and forth between this dark green and the moss and just make sure that it blends out really well, that it doesn't look like there's spots, you know, that aren't blended out. So that's how I get, I do a lot of my blending is I'll put a base, then I'll add the next color that I'm going to use. And then I go in and I blend it out with the base color that I used. So yeah, she is already looking super duper cool. Let me know for sure what you think of what's going on here. So the next step, this is my, um, my idea here. And I wanted to give her hair, but instead of just a plain old wig, 
I am doing moss. So I'm going to cover her whole head in moss and I'm going to cover like spots on the snake with moss because like I'm, when I think of Medusa, I think of, you know, something I watched recently, which was um, Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief and Medusa. She like waits, you know, she's in waiting, like waiting for someone to come um, to unleash her snakes on them and turn them into stone. So, um, this is kind of my idea of, um, that's where my inspiration came from. This Medusa was the Medusa from Percy Jackson and the lightning thief where she's in that garden. So, um, I hope you like it and I'm going to stop rambling on and just let you watch and see how the magic happens. <music> So I wanted to add a little bit of accent here and I did go around and do, she had like the leaf, um, the leaves, what is that called? At like a headband around her hair. And so I definitely wanted to highlight that. So I just pulled out some gold acrylic paint and I went over that. And then I decided that I was going to brush a little gold paint on my snakes just to give a more cohesive look. This was a really, really fun project. I thoroughly enjoy this one. I mean, I love them all, but some of them are just more, more fun and more the, the, it's the creative process that makes it a blast. So as you can see, there's some moss on the snake right there coming down in front of her face. And I just poked it in, you know, upward into the gaps and cracks filler and then I did use a little hot glue to hold it down on the edge right there so that it would stay um, pointing down like she's got a curl coming down her face. So here I hit it with my sanding block just to bring the newiness of the gold down a little bit. And she came out so beautiful. I, I just absolutely love her. I think she is such a great addition. And I don't know if I'm going to put her away after Halloween. I think she's so cool. So, so cool. Definitely let me know what you guys think down below. And uh, let me know if you would like to recreate something like this. So on to our last DIY. This is a wood round. I used the last one for my Hello Fall. I have a bunch of them. I got them at Michael's after summer. So it's like a summer on the other side. Um, and I so I paid like a couple bucks for these. So I had quite a few. So I definitely want to use them up. And that's just a little skeleton from the Dollar Tree. And I am breaking his bones right now. And he is going to go. And we are making one of those glowing ember... Uh, fire things with the gaps and cracks. So um, you'll need some skeletons, some gaps and cracks. Um, so I started with the red can. I recommend the one with the blue. It just went on so much better. And you need some mini string lights, which I got off of Amazon. So those are battery powered LED lights. Um, I do recommend LED just because you don't want to light nothing on fire because they are going to go into the gap and crack filler. Now, I have seen this done a million and one times, and I was going to do it last year, and I never did. So this is my fulfilling my desire to make this project with you guys. So this is just outside of my backyard in my little spray box. So normally when I spray paint something, I put it in the box and spray away. Um, so that way it doesn't, uh, 
I get spray paint all over the place. So I put a layer down and then I drop the lights right into the gaps and cracks filler. So I only used one strand for these. Um, again, I will link the the strand of lights that I used for this. I, there's two in the box because I am making two of these. I got these really cool plastic um, planter urns from the Dollar General when they put their summer stuff on sales, the greatest time to go buy stuff like that. Um, and they were buy one, get one free. They were $10.00. So I paid $5 a piece for them, which I think is a really good price. Um, and then, so once I have the lights in, so you're going to see in this shot, there is a black wasp and he would not go away. He was like, what do you have here? I don't know what he liked. That stuff smells horrible. I don't know why he wanted to be around it, but I had to run away for a minute and then come back. <laughs> so I put um, a layer. So we did a layer on the bottom of the gaps and cracks. Then we did a layer of lights. Then we did another layer of the gaps and cracks. And then I'm going to put some more lights in that. And then I'm going to um, also, like, I put the little head in. Um, I definitely would wait a little bit longer. Not for the stuff to harden, but I mean, I would have, I should have put the lights on first before I put him in. He kind of got a little squished in, but that's okay. Because it still looks really, really cool. So I'm going to use his his leg here to push the rest of these lights in. Uh, like I said, do not touch this stuff because it is really, really hard to get off your fingers. You just see, I've got my stuff, my thumb stuck in there. So, um, yeah. So then I'm just going to put in the bones, however it is that I like. So now you can see that I'm using a different can of the Loctite foam and, uh, the blue worked so much better so so much better than the red one so I just you know playing around with the bones here figuring out where they should go and um I didn't feel like it was enough like maybe I should have crushed up two of the little guys in there um I do end up adding some little hands skeleton hands that I had got from the 99 cent store um, last year or the year before there, I've had them for a long time. So I put those in there. My husband called this super creepy and, uh, that's the look that I was going for was a little bit on the creeper side. So the nice thing about this nozzle is you just stick it in where you want to fill the gap. That's what it does. Um, when you use it, what it's actually intended for. So anywhere that I wanted to puff up, I just shoved the nozzle in and added some more foam. So you see there's the bone coming out some more. And then I was able to uh, break the foam on the top so that you could see it some more. And then I just go around and puff out any areas because I want it to look like a pile of burning bones. So um, that's that's the best way to describe it is it's a pile of burning bones. So you would think that you wouldn't be able to see the lights through here, but you totally can. And they look so awesome. This set that I got has like eight different settings. So depending on your mood, what's the setting that you want to do, um, you go from there. So I just throw the whole like torso in and the pelvis. Yep, there we go, Amanda. Touching touching that stuff again. Don't do it. So this is when I came back and put some more hands in. And you can make this as small as or as big as you want. So this is just red spray paint. So this is all dry now. So this is all dried out, ready to go. And I'm going to go and uh, put some shots of red on here for the flame. This is black spray paint. And I'm going to go back and forth and back and forth. A lot of people I've seen, they just, you know, spray the red, they spray the black, they call it good. But I actually, you know, you know my blending. I go back and forth with the red and the black, the red and the black, because I really felt like it gave it more of authentic look. And I just absolutely love the way this came out. Let me know if you guys have made one of these yet, or if you're planning on making one. Um, it's a little bit more of an expensive of a project, because I want to say each bottle of that um, Loctite is, uh, the gaps and crack filler is like, I don't know, eight or $9 a bottle. 
Plus you have to have the spray paint, which the, you could get it at Walmart for super cheap. I want to say it's like three or $4 for a, a can of spray paint. Um, so all in all, I want to say I probably spent $20 on this project, maybe 25, but it, no, with the lights, it's a little bit more, but so cool. And it's something that'll last forever and ever, ever. That Loctite is so sturdy and will hold up to just about anything. You could have it outside. It's great. So there's my little planter urn. I spray painted it black and this is the light up version of it. And then this is in the dark. Well, as dark as I could get it for you, but I thought it looked so cool. Let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being here and I will see you guys again in the next one. <laughs>